Sandy says a read. Welcome back to the channel. Do I look exhausted? I think that I am. But we're going to power through this because it's the end of May and I want to do my very first book wrap up. I'm going to wrap up some of the books that I read in April and then the books I read in May. Um, I'm not going to do everything that I've done so far in 2018 because I don't think all y'all want to sit through all that. So we're just going to go through um, some of the books that I've gotten through so far, mostly through the month of May. Ready? We're going to dive in. First, Tina Murray released um, A Big Fan of Yours through Arca Books Publishing. Uh, I think she released this in February. I think I read it in March or April. Uh, I think I know. I think she released it in March. I read it in April. You know what? Doesn't matter. I read it and it's very nice. Tina does an excellent storytelling job and this is a wonderful romance. This is the third book in her, I, I think it's, what does she call it? The, the Starlight on the Gulf series. Uh, the first one was um, A Chance to Say Yes. This one, um, a big fan of yours, it follows uh, like the dynasty of uh, Heston Deming and his wife, Poppy, and their kids. And I'm not going to say much more than that because I don't want to give away spoilers and secrets and stuff, but there's a mystery in this one that is quite intriguing. And, you know, as I was reading this one, um, I found myself wondering how <laughs> Tina was able to draw all these different little twists and, and turns from like the very first book in the series into this one. Excellent storytelling, excellent job. I do. The next book that I want to talk about is a graphic novel. This one is The Black Pearl and it was actually released many moons ago. And you'll notice that it is by Mark Hamill. Yes, that Mark Hamill. And it's been autographed by Mark Hamill. Yes, that Mark Hamill. I got to meet him. Um, my friend Janine and I went to, um, did we go to Hollywood for a Duran Duran concert? Of course, but we were out there and I think it was in Hollywood, but we were out there and lo and behold, Mark was having a signing for this particular release while we were there that day. And we're like, what on earth? So of course I picked this up got him to sign it, and uh, Eric Johnson, who did the um, illustrations in this no in this graphic novel, also signed it. So it's just wonderful. Look, there's, there's a little heart on there that Mark drew. Isn't that sweet? Ah, oh, Luke Skywalker. Anyway, um, this one, I, I'm not a big graphic novel fan, so I really put off reading this until this year. I just read this in May. I know it's been on my shelf. I've, you know, moved it with me as I've moved from, <laughs> from Kansas City to here. I, I've just never sat down and read it because I, I've had no interest in graphic novels. But I want to have an interest in them. I want to, you know, expand my horizons and, and do more reading of, just more genres, more books, more interesting things. I don't know that this was the one I should have started with. Um, I was disappointed by the number of um, cliche characters that were in here. I thought that Mark could have done just so much better. He's such a creative individual. I, I thought he would have done a much better job. But I didn't. I, I didn't collect the rest of this series. I don't know how much more development happened in the rest of this series. So it could be very awesome, and I'm just not giving it a fair shake because this is just the first and and just the first that I've read. I, I was also disappointed in the the number of scantily clad women with large breasts all over this graphic novel. It was kind of off-putting to me. Um, maybe that's just the way graphic novels are. If, if that's true, then I'm, I don't know that I want to expand my horizons in that direction. Um, you guys will have to comment below and, and help me um, come up with some other graphic novels that maybe I should be looking into. Um, I 
have a friend, her name is Raven Bauer. She and her husband uh, do graphic novels. And she actually was published by the same publisher that I was published by. And, and she may be someone I need to look into. But if you guys have some, uh, some suggestions for me, leave those in the comments below. Because I am interested in exploring some more graphic novels, but not those that have just scantily clad women with big boobs. <laughs> Next. Okay, the next book that I want to talk about is Fury Born by Claire Legrand. I, I am going to give some spoilers. So, starting now, you might want to put this on mute, and then when I put the book down, you can unmute and, and be back on, on this video. But I am going to give some spoilers while I talk. Uh, I'll try not to give too many spoilers, but just in case, you might want to mute this until I put the book down, okay? Um... I I gave this book not all five stars on Goodreads. Um, it had a very interesting premise, very interesting uh, characters throughout. There is a beast in this that uh, one of the queens uh, conjures called a Chavale. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but I really liked that creature. That was interesting to me. I, I liked that, and I liked its description, um, what description we got of it. But... Um, and I, I don't like to uh, be negative, especially about authors. I, as an author myself, I don't like to hear criticism of other authors because it's just not, it's not constructive to be critical of authors. So I, I don't want to say anything overly negative about this book. I want to point out the, the good things and the positive things I saw in this book. Um, for example, there's an awesome map in this book to help you follow along with the uh, the journey that um, it's one of the characters specifically goes on in this book. And if you're not familiar with the, the novel, with uh, what Claire has created here, there are two queens um, that have been foretold to be rising in this society. Uh, one of them is a sun queen, one of them is a blood queen. And um, what's intriguing and what's very interesting in this book is that as these two characters are followed in this non-linear storytelling style, um, the characters around them sort of assign to them the type of queen they think they are. And I don't think I agree with what those characters decide for them. I, I wasn't a hundred percent convinced by the end of both storylines that the queens had been uh, put in their proper categories. I, I didn't think that their designation had really been set correctly for them by the other characters. Now, I don't know if that's what Claire um, intended for the reader to come away with or not, um, but it's intriguing to me. And, and I'm interested to see if these two characters really are the types of queens that the other characters uh, define them as. It'll really be interesting to see in, in the rest of the series. Um, I I guess I do recommend this book um, just because that that duplicity, that duplicitous nature of the queens is, is intriguing and, and other people may find that intriguing as well. Okay, I'm going to put this book down now and y'all can come back, okay? Never Fly Solo by Waldo Waldman. Um, the Lieutenant Colonel gave a presentation at an annual meeting that I attended uh, back in February. So I picked up his book um, after the, uh, the keynote speech that he gave. Um, I got to meet him. I'll put that picture in here. Yay! Um, so I visited with him very briefly and, you know, got got the book signed. Um, I gave this one, um, I think, four out of five stars on Goodreads just because it was very, um, very didactic. Of course, though, because he's using this as a, a tool to inspire and motivate. But it was just kind of uh, full of mm, military allegories. <laughs> It's been a little while since I read it. I read this back in March, but it's, I mean, it's good to, you know, help inspire you in a business sense or in a, um, a sense of just encouraging a person to, you know, find the folks in your business life or personal life 
who will you know stay on your wing who will be your wingman who will be the person who encourages you helps you keeps you from falling flat on your face that sort of thing I and mean, obviously by the title never fly solo you, you're he's encouraging you to find folks who will who will support and encourage and, and be there for you I finally got to Can You Forgive Her by Anthony Trollope. Um, if you saw one of my earlier videos here on BookTube, this was on my TBR tree. I took it with me on one of my business trips during the month of May and got to reading it. And let me tell you what, throughout this book, I was singing in my head the Pet Shop Boys. I have to say I would recommend this. It's a good classic. It is wordy. Let me show you. This is a lot of pages of small type. I mean, this is this is a lot of wordiness, but that was, you know, Anthony Trollope's style back then. A lot of this book did also deal with politics. Several of the characters the male characters, of course, were interested in Parliament, going into Parliament, being a part of that, um, running for elections, spending money to be part of elections, and of course taking women's money to do that. So it was, it was an intriguing novel, to be sure. So I, I would recommend it if you're looking for a classic to read. Just be prepared for a long read. Now this young adult novel uh, by Louise Renison is Angus thongs and full frontal snogging and it is as silly as it sounds but the silliness is um, very easy to read very easy to get through I mean as you can see the formatting here it's very much like a, a, a young girl's diary in the way it is written and presented and that formatting makes it very easy to get through very easy to read and understand um, it's written by um, in the point of view of a young British girl. So there's a lot of terminology in there that the author does um, explain. You get some footnotes, you get some you know, parentheses that, sh that sh say, pardon me, that say you know, what these different terms mean for you know, a, an, an American audience. Um, and so that may be a very appealing to you know, um, an American young adult who wants to read something like this, just to get that, you know, that feel of something uh, from overseas, you know, something European. Um, it's, that might be of interest to a young adult reader. I was disappointed in uh, the, the young lady's actions a lot of the time. I mean, I understand this is from a young girl's point of view, Therefore, she's not going to be making adult decisions. She's not going to be making great decisions. Her choices are not going to be fabulous and wonderful. But, you know, we're... I would hope that young girls would take more pride in themselves than this young lady did in this book. Um, and so I, I don't know that I would recommend that, you know, a mom or a dad run out and get this book and hand it to their 12-year-old girl to read, unless it also comes with a couple of warnings. <laughs> I don't know. There's just, there's a lot of um, disdain for authority in this book that just didn't seem appropriate. I mean, it's it's a contemporary young adult book that just didn't set right with me. But then I'm, you know, 47 years old. I'm not the target audience. I picked this book up because I wanted to see the way the author handled the formatting, the diary um, entry type of writing, you know, the style. I was interested in seeing um, a point of view narrative in this way. I was interested in the mechanics of this more than the content when I picked it up um, in an airport bookstore to be precise. Um, I was interested in that part of it from a writer's point of view. And so there you go. If you, <laughs> if I've sold you on it, I'm surprised, but you, you may find this of, of interest. This book, um, Their Fate is Our Fate by Peter Doherty. This one I read for the Parrot magazine that I edit and publish. 
Um, I read this one so that I could do a review of it in that publication. Um, I gave this one three out of five stars on Goodread, Goodreads, just because I I was um, I was off put by the by the author's manner of speaking to the reader. Um, he seemed to be at one point um, interested in encouraging us towards citizen science, and then in the next breath was. Uh, it was not. It was just very, very strange. It was an odd read. Now, I did get to The Book Thief. Um, this was on my TBR tree, and it's been on my TBR shelf for, I, I want to say, a year. I've had it on the shelf for a year, maybe a year and a half. Um, but I I enjoyed it very much. I, I think that I enjoyed it more three or four days after I'd finished it. Like I put it down after I'd finished it. I put it down thinking about it going, hmm. But, you know, a few days later, I realized I really did enjoy this book. I really did like it. The, you know, the character arcs, the growth in the characters, the, everything about it just felt better after I'd had some time to think about it. And I know that a lot of folks in BookTube have already read this book, so I'm not really telling you anything new talking about this book. So I'm not going to go into great detail, but I did enjoy it, and I do recommend it. For anyone who hasn't gotten to it yet, if it's on your TBR shelf, go ahead and pick it up. It's it's not an easy read. Uh, the formatting is, is easy. Um, the narrator does interject with uh, interesting little tidbits from time to time that make it just a, a quick jump through as you read. Um, but it is a serious book. There's serious content. Obviously, it takes place... World War Two, but it's um, it's a good book. I recommend if it's on your TBR shelf, go ahead and pull it down and read it. It's it's excellent. It's worth. It. And then the last book that I want to talk about is uh, The Great Stone Face by Nathaniel Hawthorne. This particular edition has uh, two other short stories and then some uh, some like sketches writing in at the end. Um, this particular edition, I. Let me say, I don't want to lie to you guys. Hang on, let me see what year. 1889 is when this one was published. This is a uh, hardcover. Wonderful. It's, it smells so good. <laughs> but this, uh, I had not read these particular short stories by Nathaniel Hawthorne yet. I, can you believe it? Um, so I sat down during the month of May and read through these and, and took my time to just absorb them and I really enjoyed it. If you haven't read um, all of Nathaniel Hawthorne's short stories yet, um, the, the Great Stone Face, um, The Ambitious Traveler, The Ambitious Guest, The Ambitious Guest, those two specifically are really just really good, really wonderful. I mean, the, the scenery descriptions and the richness of the of the language that Hawthorne uses is just wonderful. I really enjoyed them, and and they don't take that long to read, even if you're seeping yourself in them as you read them. They really don't take that long. So I would recommend if you can pick up a copy of this that perhaps was published more recently than 1889, I, I recommend it. I think that you will enjoy it. Those are all the books that we're going to talk about from April and May. Um, tomorrow evening, I will do my to-be-read pile for the month of June. <laughs> I think that's what I do next. Is that right? I'm still new to BookTube, so you guys, you have to guide me. You have to help me with this stuff. Um, but please, in the comments below, talk about um, these books that I've uh, listed for you here this evening. Um, I'll put them in a list in the information below so that you can look them up if you're interested in pursuing them yourself. If you've read some of these, let's talk about them in the comments below. And please remember that I am looking for suggestions of graphic novels that I can, you know, expand my horizons with. And um, thank you so much.